Let's talk about Senate Bill 941. In essence and in a nutshell, what does this bill do now that it is becoming law? It will expand our current back law, uh, background check law to include all private sales, not just those that occurred at gun shows. So today, uh, uh, when the bill goes into effect, uh, individuals that are required to have a background check uh, on a person-to-person, private-to-private cell will be required to go through the background check. Now, there are some exceptions, uh, specifically family or excluded out, and then there are some uh, transfers that are not considered transfers. They're more of a loaning of the, of the weapon uh, for a period of time that do not require the background check. Let's be real specific. What does transfer mean? A transfer basically means where an individual is taking a weapon and they're uh, with intent to change possession of that and ownership of that weapon from themselves to an, uh, another person. Okay. Um, if someone bequeaths, we had a viewer, and the viewer asked, can I bequeath my weapons to a non-relative? If I do so, must they go through a background check? Yes, they can definitely uh, bequeath them to a non-family member, and in that particular situation, if the uh, individual is not a family member covered under the exemptions, there would be requirement of a background check. How would that take place? Uh, basically, for the bequeathing, you'd have uh, someone that's going to be managing the estate, the pers uh, per personal representative. He or she would have the authority to administer uh, uh, the process of uh, getting the assets, in this case a gun, to the in individual that has been bequeathed that weapon. Uh, if, again, the person is not eligible uh, under the family exception, then that personal representative would be required to run a background check on the person that is supposed to receive the gun to ensure they are eligible, meaning they're not a felon uh, or had mental health issues that prohibited them from having uh, the gun or underage. Okay. Can a person loan or allow someone to borrow their gun, who's a friend, for hunting purposes or any other purposes? Uh, yes, they can. Uh, they can actually, for hunting, trapping, and target shooting, uh, provide a gun to an individual that, that's not only in their presence, meaning they're together at the same time, they can actually loan the weapon to an individual to take with them uh, as an individual to go hunting uh, by themselves without the actual owner of the weapon. So for example, I let my friend borrow my gun to go hunting maybe in Bend even though I live in Portland. That's correct. Okay. Uh, next question. For the background checks, how much is this going to cost the individual when they have to go and get one or they're selling a gun to a friend and they go together? What's, what are we looking at cost? Well, currently the cost for the state police to do the background check is $10. Uh, the way the bill is, uh, is written, it will allow for those individual dealers that uh, you go to have the transaction through to charge a reasonable amount. I understand those amounts vary. Uh, from store to store, but my understanding is somewhere around 20 to $30. So to be clear, there is no set amount that a dealer will charge it. It's dependent upon what the dealer chooses to charge for the background check. Right, and not only that, they, they're not obligated to, to do this. This is a free market enterprise, so the individual business has the ability to say this is part of our business plan, we'd like to capture this business, or they could say no. If they say yes, we will do that, then they have the right to set a reasonable fee uh, clearly, if I was the individual selling the weapon and I went to a place and I thought the fee was too high, I would go down the street to another dealer uh, that would have hopefully a, a better uh, rate. When I go to sell my gun or when a viewer goes to sell their gun to a friend, what do they need to do? Uh, basically, I guess they need to determine uh, if the individual uh, is eligible. Again, the background check is the main uh, in part. Uh, what I would suggest is that they would be contacting uh, a licensed dealer uh, there are, uh, throughout the state and based on the information we've heard that uh, the vast majority of Oregonians live within 25 miles of a dealer and of course in cities it's much closer. But just make contact and to say this is what I'm wanting to do, transfer this gun uh, to a friend, need to do the background check and then the store will tell them what hours of day that they would be uh, doing those type of checks, what the fee would be, and, uh, and, and then they would just proceed after that. Who is going to be administering all of this? Uh, the administration is through the state police and the sense of current uh, law. Remember that our background check law has been in effect for 25 years. 
And so the uh, uh, Oregon State Police Firearms Unit is the one that does the background check and they are the ones that will be continue to administer this expanded part. What are the penalties for non-compliance? Uh, the, uh, the individual that is selling the weapon, if they fail to do the background check, uh, the first uh, penalty or first charge would be as a, as a misdemeanor, class A misdemeanor. And if their individual is convicted of that offense, and then they can uh, continue that same practice and have a second charge, which we, uh, that would be charged as a class C felony. And then if they are convicted there, then they would be uh, having elevated, uh, potential eleva elevated fines and possible uh, prison. What about for the people who before this, this part of the law has been passed, have had a friend to friend or a friend to stranger or they've sold guns privately do they now have to go and get a background check if they've done this prior? Like say I sold a gun to a friend three years ago, but it was before this law. Mm -hmm. Are they under any obligation to get a background check with that person? They need to go back and contact them. Does that matter now? No, it does not. It, there's no retroactivity uh, for any transaction that occurred. It will only uh, be in effect once it goes in a, uh, into effect by a signature of the governor, and in that particular area, talking about the background check, it's 90 days after signature by the governor before that obligation uh, starts. Anything else that you think our viewers might be confused about, need clarification on? Uh, the, uh, this is a process that uh, has worked well in uh, ensuring that individuals that are not eligible to have uh, guns uh, to deny them that easy access. Uh, I think the important part is for individuals to understand this is an obligation uh, that will make them and everyone else safe. Hopefully that they will comply with the law. And what we have found is that the wait time is not that uh, significant. And that we also know that individuals who sometimes are friends or acquaintances may have a past that we don't know about and that there are truly ineligible and what we're trying to do is ensure that individuals that have been prohibited by law from having access to guns do not have easy access to guns.